How's it going everybody? For those of you looking to take full advantage of your Android software, here's a huge list of hidden features that you'll be sure to use. Let's jump right in. I'm sure the majority of you use Google's Messages app since it's simple, fast, and material. And you probably know about their web version where you can see and respond to all your messages straight from your computer. However, I'm pretty sure that you didn't know that Messages web version supports emoticon shortcuts. In other words, you can send your friends shruggies, table flips, and even Finn and Jake from Adventure Time, all with simple text commands. I'll drop a link to an Andrew Police article showing you all the available emoticon shortcuts. Just keep in mind that this Easter egg is only supported for the web version of Google's messaging app and not the actual app itself. I'd use an app called Look Up Disapproval if you'd like something similar for your mobile device. App shortcuts have been around since Android Nougat, yet not a lot of people use them. I personally haven't even touched shortcuts since Corbin from Android Police released an article showing off some forgotten Android features and explaining how an app shortcut can be a better replacement for the main app's icon. It's especially useful if you visit the same screen in a certain app constantly and just want to jump to it immediately from the home screen. For example, if you use Google Maps to go to work, then you can add a shortcut to instantly map you to that destination. Some other examples include adding a selfie shortcut, a Spotify playlist that you listen to constantly, a notification log history to view your notification history, a Venmo shortcut to instantly make a new payment, and more. Not every app supports shortcuts, but you can find out the ones that do by long pressing any app. If a menu pops up with familiar contents, then you can long press on one of those items and then drag and drop it anywhere on your home screen. Now before I move on to even more tips and tricks, I wanted to share a website that sponsored our channel and that can also teach you a broad range of interesting topics. It's called Skillshare, and within this page there are more than 25,000 classes to join and learn about something new. Topics covered include content for creators, business, technology, and more. Personally, I signed up for some of their film production classes, a video editing course for Adobe Premiere, some Android app programming, and a few entrepreneurship classes to better understand how to run a company. Their premium membership, which gives you unlimited access to all of their communities and classes, isn't even that expensive. Getting their annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. However, the first 500 people which use the link in the description to sign up will get a two month free trial. So give Skillshare a try, especially if you want to learn a few new things in 2019. Anyways, I hope this doesn't happen to you, but if you run into problems on your Android device, such as overheating, battery drain, random reboots, or even lag, and aren't sure what's causing these issues, you can boot your phone into safe mode to see if it's any of your installed third-party apps. When booting into safe mode, none of your third-party apps will run, so you can decipher if the problem is caused by a pesky app that you installed. Most of the time, problems like these can occur if you installed or siloed an app from the web and not the Play Store, so I would look into deleting those first. Booting into safe mode can vary between devices, but usually the process is to press and hold the power off button in the power menu and then tap OK when you get a prompt to reboot into safe mode. To turn off safe mode, you just need to restart the device again. If the process is different for your Android, then I recommend just Googling it. If you frequently type out the same repetitive long phrases, then you can use personal dictionary in the settings to create simple text shortcuts for those long phrases. For example, if I want to type out my address quickly, then I can just type out Addy, and then my address will appear in the suggestions of the keyboard. To do this, go into the settings, system, languages and input, personal dictionary. From there, tap the plus icon, type the longer phrase in the text field that says type a word, and then the shortened keyword, which you'll use to bring up the longer phrase into the text field that says optional shortcut. Now go back and use that short keyword when typing instead of that long lengthy text. For those of you who split screen, you'll be amazed to find that you can drag and drop text from one window to the other. For example, if I have Google Chrome and messages open in split screen, I can highlight any text in Chrome and drag it over to a text field in Android messages. Sure, most apps don't support these APIs, but the ones that do can save you the extra step of having to copy and paste. Also, just a quick side note, Google does support the ability to drag and drop images and other content as well, but I can't seem to find any apps that support these implementations. If you guys know any apps that do, let me know down in the comments. If you use Google Maps on a regular basis, why not download a huge chunk of your area for offline use? Trust me, when you're lost and without signal or short on data, then you'll thank me for having used offline maps. To use this feature on the main page, slide out the left menu, tap on offline maps, then tap on select your own map, pinch to zoom out, and any map in that blue box will be downloaded. You can download multiple areas with each being up to 500 megabytes in size, which is around two hours of distance from the center point of the downloaded map. You probably won't need it, but if you have the free space, it can't do any harm, and those offline maps will automatically update on their own. When receiving an incoming call, you can silence the ringtone quickly by pressing the volume rocker, 
This is perfect for when your phone starts ringing in your pocket during class or if you forgot to turn it off or mute it at the movies. You can also end a phone call with the power button by enabling an accessibility feature in the settings. So in the settings under system and then accessibility, there's an option called power button ends call. Enable it and that's it. So we all know that swiping down on the status bar will bring down the notifications panel and another swipe will bring down the quick settings panel. However, a real power user will save that extra bit of time by using a two finger swipe to instantly open the quick settings. Or if you tap on the status bar once and swipe down quickly, you can bring up the quick settings as well. Lastly, if you double tap on the status bar, you can pull up the notification panel. One of the oldest tricks in the book to make your phone feel faster than it actually is, is to increase the animation speed within the settings. To do this, first we need to enable developer options in the settings by going into system, about phone, and then tapping the build number field seven times. Then go back and tap on developer options, scroll down till you see the section titled drawing, and then change all the three options with the word scale in the title to an animation scale of 0.5x. This will trim down animation speeds, making apps feel like they're closing and opening way faster. Last but not least, even though this isn't a hidden feature, I do think every Android user should be aware of this. Using dark mode on a smartphone with an AMOLED panel will save you large amounts of battery. And I'm not talking a few percentages, but a quarter or more of your battery life. Enabling dark mode throughout the UI can vary depending on the type of phone you own. Some have system-wide settings while others don't, but typically if the option is available, it can be found within the settings under the display option and some apps, including a few Google ones, have an option to enable dark mode within the individual app settings. I made a whole video on my personal channel showing the advantages of using dark mode in detail and how to enable dark mode for various Google and popular apps. So click that eye in the right corner if you're interested in learning a few facts. Anyways, those are some hidden features that I believe every Android user should know about. Corbin over at Android Police also made a list of his own showing some amazing tricks and tips, including pinning apps, connecting USB devices to your Android device, reducing cell battery drain, and more. I'll drop that link right below the like button. Either way, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you know any hidden features that I should know about. Sub to Android Police for some more awesome content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.